Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk with you guys today about EA Access. Now I know that this is still a couple weeks away, but I want to get you guys prepared for this because this is a very big point of FIFA 20. Uh, obviously you get a chance to play FIFA 20 a couple days early. You get a chance to get inside the menus for the first time, and it is a 10 hour trial. Um, that should be coming out on the 19th of September. That should be the release date for EA Access. That's what it says on the PS4 console and on the Xbox console. Since it is out for both of those consoles this year, which is a, a new thing for FIFA 20. And when you see me, we're going to look at some footprint graphs today. When you see me look at those footprint graphs, we're going to be looking at Xbox prices because last year on FIFA 19, EA Access was only available on X Xbox, so PS4 guys from last year, we're going to be looking at Xbox graphs, and don't just think that they won't apply to you, because this year they actually will apply to both consoles this year, because both consoles, for the first time, will have EA Access. But I want to talk about today how to best, you, best use your 10 hours on EA Access, and also how to best trade and make coins during EA, EA Access. So it's going to be a big time video, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so basically what you're going to happen is when you load up FIFA 20 for the first time with EA Access, you're going to see it say something about starting your 10-hour trial, you'll press yes, it'll put you into the game, and you will be sitting here on the menus like this. Depending on if you've used the web app, before EA Access dropped, you might have some coins. If your EA Access is the first time getting on the game, you might have a couple welcome backpacks, you go through all the welcome stuff or whatever um, on the actual console. Um, and the first thing that I always recommend to people is going into the catalog and redeeming all the free stuff from up here. Somebody told me that there, there is not going to be a catalog for FIFA 20. I don't know if that's true or not. So if we don't have a, cat, a catalog for FIFA 20, we won't be able to have these coin boosts, which are very nice to have, or all the balls that you can quick sell in here. So if you um, actually, if we do have a catalog in FIFA 20, make sure you redeem all of the balls and the kits and the individual items that are in here, and you can quick sell those a few coins off of that to help you get your coin total up to start and to begin with. Um, but other than that, some general things about EA Access and the best way to use your 10 hours, I want to talk about that first before we get into trading stuff. Using your 10 hours on EA Access, uh, unless there's a glitch where you can get unlimited hours, we'll look and cover that if that happens when EA Access is actually happening. But the best way to use your 10 hours is it's it's a one question it's a one answer to the question and that is gameplay because packs are so huge early on in this game that if you can collect some rewards from playing squad battles from online drafts or from division rivals which um, I would those are, those would be the only three modes that I would consider playing because you do get coins from those and rewards and to narrow it down even more specific I would just stick to squad battles because you can get a lot more games in on squad battles. You don't have to worry about trying to connect to an opponent, laggy gameplay, or opponents rage quitting. Um, you just play against the com computer for 90 minutes and you can rack up some um, rewards based on uh, doing squad battles and playing squad battles. So you get four games a day on squad battles. So this should take you just over an hour a day if you just play squad battles which I recommend only playing on EA Access if you have a timed 10 hours and there's no way to get around that 10 hours or to make it even more um, I would say the best way to use those hours is to play games and to play squad battles specifically because you can get four games in in a little bit over an hour let's say an hour and 20 minutes that's 20 minutes per game an hour and 20 minutes for four games um, if if EA Access does drop on the 19th um, you will have your 10 hour period. You can split that up over a couple of days. So you should be able to hop on and play four games and then you can hop off or hop on and play two, hop off and whatever. But playing games on squad battles, I think is the best option for you guys at the beginning of the game. Don't worry about, um, your skill level too much. Maybe even set it a little bit lower than you think you might want to because you all, you're just about getting rewards. And if you're gonna be playing more games, you can lower the skill level a little bit, especially if it's getting into a new game and you're not entirely sure what your skill level could be for this game. Maybe if you're usually playing on Legendary, 
on squad battles. Maybe tone it down to professional, just so you can get guaranteed wins and guaranteed more rewards. And you're not just you're not entirely worried about getting the highest rank. You just want to get solid, solid packs. So most people maybe will be playing on professional or semi-pro. And if you play most of your games on that, I mean, you're probably going to end up getting a high gold rank, like a gold two, a gold one, maybe. And if you look at some of these packs, prime mixed players, premium gold players pack, jumbo premium gold pack, and 11,000 coins. I mean, obviously these are FIFA 19 rewards, but imagine getting that on Sunday night of the first like three days that the EA Access is live. Imagine getting that kind of pack. You might be able to make, with the 11,000 plus those packs, you might be able to make 50K from squad battle rewards, even by just packing a few 82s and maybe an 83 rated player. That's some big time coins um, from EA Access. So the best way, in my opinion, to use your 10 hours on EA Access is to get inside the game, start playing, um, and if you max yourself out in squad battles games and you think that you're going to um, have extra time that you have to play and your squad battle rank won't be improved by playing more games, then maybe slip into, to, into division rivals and see if you can get a few games in and just kind of see where the amount of the rank is, like how much score there is for each rank. If you can tell that there's a lot of people playing squad battles or a lot of people playing rivals, play the other one because you might be able to attain a higher rank where less people are playing and therefore get better rewards if you put more time into that. So kind of just keep in tune with where the um, the rewards rankings are for rivals and for squad battles based on the amount of points uh, because I think actually it might not be worth it to play rivals at all because you had those ranking games at the beginning, those five matches that it takes you to get ranked into rivals. So squad battles literally might just be the best way to do it. That way you don't have to waste your t any time on the five ranked matches where it places you in a division for rivals. So I would say probably just stick to squad battles. Now that I think about that, just stick to squad battles um, and just spam as many games in that game mode as you can. A draft, if you're somebody who has FIFA points, then possibly a draft could be good if you are an advanced player, if you are very good at the game. Um, from FIFA 19 and years before, a draft could be worth it for you, but only if you're going to get three or four wins in the foot draft would I recommend spending the 15,000 coins or the FIFA points on actually going into those drafts. Other than, that, other than that, I would just recommend staying on squad battles and spamming those games with whatever team that you have um, in your squad at that time. So that's how I would use your 10 hours. But now I want to start looking at some trading stuff because... The EA Access period is finally when we have people that have demand on the game for teams. I did a video yesterday about the web app and the ways to trade and kind of how we have to think about trading during the web app period where um, nobody has teams to, they can actually play with yet. They're just building teams to actually have a starter squad and to actually put a team together in their club or in their ultimate team, but they can't actually use it yet. So the demand is a lot different there since people aren't actually trying to get players to play the actual game itself. But with EA Access, we have the full game, we can play. Um, so that's where the kind of demand for this stuff changes inside of the game. So you have, I have here a bunch of graphs uh, and tabs of footbin that we're gonna look at. And the first one I'm gonna talk about is basically some of these cards that you're gonna flip. And each one of these cards that I'm looking at here today tells a story. Um, so basically what I did last year during EA Access was I flipped a ton of cards and you know in the middle of EA Access is when Footbin kind of gets up and running so you can start to see a little bit of these trends. This is Kieran Trippier. Um, this is a 82 rated right back from the Premier League. So this is a very base, it's not a very good card but at the start of FIFA this is a decent card that a lot of people would probably use in their starter teams. He's 82 rated and look at his price first day. Six thousand coins upwards of seven thousand coins for that first first couple of days and you see his price kind of rise up into the actual early access release for people that pre-ordered the game then he kind of goes down and then goes back up upon the full game release but um we're focused on this period it's basically right up until before this graph happens and then up until this point on monday right here now i made a lot of notes from last year i had this little trading notes page that i made for myself and basically I was reading through that today to kind of remind myself what I did last year at the beginning of the game. I remember trading with this Trippier card because um, there's a lot of 
um, ups and downs that happen with the market during the EA access period. Same thing with this Jesse Lingard. And Footbin is like whack right now. What's all this white space? I don't know. Footbin's crazy at the moment. Um, but there's a lot of fluctuation with these cards. You see Lingard's price here is at 10,000 coins on a daily average, about 10,000 on Friday, 10.4, and almost 11,000, but pretty pretty similar until his price drops off considerably when the, the, um, the early access comes out. But what you don't see here is a daily fluctuation. This, this price right here, the daily price, doesn't show you actually the fluctuations that happened throughout the day. I remember multiple times last year that I was going on to the market during EA Access. I was looking up Jesse Lingard. I'll do it for you guys right now. I was looking up Jesse Lingard, and his card was going for around um, it's going for around 8,000 coins late at night. This card right here, I'd buy it for 8,000 coins. Basically, when the UK falls asleep, which is about midnight UK for the next three or four hours, is a great time to pick up cards. Now, if you're somebody who can stay up late, that's a great opportunity. Or if you're even up at like midnight UK, it's kind of a decent opportunity to start looking at some of these cards, um, which also midnight UK is like 7 p.m. for us guys in the US. So that works out very well because that's kind of our peak time where most of the people are on. Easiest for us to play FIFA at that time. But... Overnight, when the UK was asleep, the UK was not awake, this Lingard card would drop down to about 8,000 coins, 8,500, and then boom, the UK would wake up in the morning the next day, and he would be 11K. So I have multiple um, notes of last year where I bought Lingard for around 8,000 coins and was able to sell him for 11K um, literally like seven or eight hours later. So that's something that we can do. Um, is during that low, that low period of the night, we can go on the market and pick up some cards, list them for six hours overnight at maybe, you know, increase them like 20% in price. And then we can wake up in the morning and we'll probably see them start to sell, which is perfect because then we can do some more trading throughout the day. Um, and we can be safe and have all of our cards sell before 6 PM, just in case EA drops some content. And then we can do the same thing the next night. And you can find different cards that work the best. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some cards fluctuate more than others. Premier League, English, very hyped up. New transfer cards. Um, I, I traded with Jorginho. Obviously, last year, Jorginho was a once to watch. He had a decent card. His card this year still looks not very good. I'll just, that's to say the least. His card this year does not look very good. But this card's a solid center mid for a starter FIFA 19 team. And I remember this card fluctuating a lot from about 8 to 11k as well uh, early on in the game. And then you know, this is basically what you want to do with these cards. The flipping, the the up and down uh, trends is the, the biggest thing that you're going to want to be able to, to, to wrap your mind around. You'll be able to see it on footprint graphs. Obviously, you can't see it on here because this is a daily graph, not an hourly graph. But there will be daily graphs that, that see this. After the first couple of days of EA access, you'll be able to see stuff gets low at night. You can pick it up, and then you can sell it during the day, during the peak times of FIFA, the next day of EA access. As people get on again, they start building their teams. They're using their 10 hours to play games, etc., so that's one point I wanted to make. One other thing that I want to make regards these two guys right here, Perisic and Douglas Costa. Now, obviously, I don't know what's going on with this footprint thing, all this white space. It's ticking me off. But I want to look at this right here because this is somewhere that I did not take action last year. I saw this massive difference, and there was a big-time coins to be made here. And it basically revolves around players that are on the same position in the same league. Um but they're different prices at the start of the game. And I have two examples of this. First one is Douglas Costa and Perisic. So Douglas Costa, you see here, obviously he's got the five-star skills. Um, he's very fast, so he's got a lot of pace. If you're looking for a left winger in the Serie A or Brazilian left winger, this is your guy. So he's about 70,000 coins first couple days of EA access. Perisic, on the other hand, down here at about 32K, rises up to 40K. And I want to talk about this a little bit. Actually, before Footbin Crafts even registered this, I remember Ivan Perisic being 16,000 coins on the first and second day of EA Access. He was 16,000 coins for an 86 rated card like this at the start of FIFA, which is ridiculous. Douglas Costa, as a matter of fact, this card was about 40K. So he even rose almost doubled between when the EA Access first came out and when you see the graph start here 
uh, on a Friday, which I think actually was about the same time. But I think first day, Douglas Costa was like 40,000 coins, and he shoot up, shot up to 70 right away. But Perisic was 16K. And so Perisic was very undervalued, and that's why you see this massive rise from 30K. He was actually 16K, and he goes all the way up to 40K. But you see that massive rise because if you think about left wingers or left mids in the Serie A, you kind of come down to these two guys as your only options, Perisic and Douglas Costa. And when they have such massive price discrepancies with 16K versus 40K, something has to give. Either one has to go down to meet the other or one has to go up in price to meet somewhere in the middle or reach all the way back up to that other player's price depending on how good the cards are, everything like that. But what happened in this case was Perisic went up to get closer in price to the Douglas Costa card because of how expensive he was and people were like, well, I want to make a Serie A team. Douglas Costa is 70k, but I only have like 50k, so I'm going to have to go and buy Perisic instead. There's a lot of stuff that happens like that in the game. One other example of that that I do have is actually Rashford versus Martial. Uh, Rashford's base card, 81 rated. This card was stupid expensive at the beginning of the game for an 81 rated card. Look at this drop off. Look at this drop off from Rashford. It's crazy. But him and Martial had a similar effect at the beginning of the game. Rashford's around 30,000 coins. Obviously, he drops off a bunch. So here's Rashford at 30k. Now let's go over here and look up Martial. Kind of compare these guys again because I remember this same thing happened with these cards during the, uh, the year as well. What is this? This is an 83 Martial that we want to look at right here. Um, so Martial, let's go all and zoom it back out and we'll get the right price for you guys so I can show you this little comparison right here. So Martial right here, up to 50,000 coins right away. Rashford is about 32,000 coins. But first day, I remember Rashford being under 20,000 coins. And I knew after I saw Martial at around 40k that there had to be something to give there. So obviously, I think I bought one Rashford at like 20k, and I sold it right here for 30,000 coins like three days later. So that was that was a decent little bit of flipping, uh, almost an investment, but it is basically just flipping. Um, it's basically just flipping for this EA access period, and that's what I wanted to emphasize again with you guys as well. EA Access and the web app is all about flipping, flipping, and flipping. I mean, we're not going to be sitting here on the game and buying um, cards to invest in maybe a little bit towards the end of EA Access into the early access, the pre-order stages of the game. But most of the time, you're just going to be flipping cards, finding the trends, the fluctuations, buying low at the nighttime when the game is low, dead, and then selling the next day in the hype when everybody is back onto the game. So that's kind of your main mindset for a lot of this stuff. Um, and I, I think I showed some good examples there with the Rashford, with the Perisic, and with the Douglas Costa. But a lot of that stuff, like finding the Rashford and the Martial and finding what makes their prices be so far apart, it just kind of depends on the market. So this is the kind of time of FIFA where the way that you're gonna to wanna to find players like this is literally just going into, uh, I'm gonna to go to FIFA 19 players for the sake of FIFA 19 and finding stuff like this but i would basically just go by league so search top five leagues we're going to go premier league then we're going to search by position so let's go you know um you'll probably need a center back well now there's a lot of those let's go right backs in fifa all right right backs that are version gold all gold rare so a gold rare right back what do we have in fifa walker valencia trippier our year some of these guys i mean ricardo Pereira for me was a I flipped this card so much for around 10,000 coins, like 7 to 10K at the beginning of the... Yes, look at this, 10,000 coins right here. I flipped Ricardo Pereira all the freaking time because this is a perfect starter team right back, and his card price fluctuated so much because of that. So look to buy some of these cards, especially during little like reward sprees, like Sunday night when we get, um, Sunday night when we get the first um, squad battles rewards. A lot of these cards will dip down in price from the supply, and but they'll shoot right back up after rewards. It's exactly like a foot champs rewards um, earlier or during the weekly cycle of the game because that's like the first rewards that are on the game that people have to actually get coins and to open up packs in that way is by um, 
getting those squad battle rewards. So that's a great time to flip some of these cards. Even guys like Callum Wilson. I have very, very good memories of flipping this Callum Wilson card. He was like 4,000 coins. Boom, nailed it on the head. Look at that, 4,000 coins. My memory is serving me correctly. He's like 4,000 coins in the first couple days of this of this game. Um, I was flipping this card all the time from like 3, 3.2K to 4.5K because it's a perfect, pacey, and English striker in the Premier League. A lot of people like to start off the year playing with a Premier League team. They just build it up and keep improving it throughout the year. Um, so just look at good nations, good leagues for cards that you can flip during EA Access because people actually have an incentive to play the game now. They can actually get on the game. They can play rivals. They can play draft. They can play squad battles. And they start building their ultimate team. So I would recommend um, just looking at some of those cards, looking at English guys, look at some of the new transfers that could be hyped up that are going to be you know, somewhere in that... So the perfect range for a lot of these cards that you're looking for in price, like the Callum Wilsons, um, like the Jorginhos, you're looking in that like 2 to 20k range. 20k might be a little bit high, 15k, because think about yourself early on in the game, you might only have 50,000 coins. So yes, you could buy 10 Callum Wilsons for 3,000 coins. That's going to take you 30k. That way you have a little bit extra to, to trade with if you're on like that 50k budget. Um, because you know it's hard to invest in stuff. It's not going to be worth it for you if you have twenty thousand coins. It's not going to be worth it for you to invest in two Jesse Lingards that are ten k and put all your coins into that to make five k from both of those cards. So you spent twenty k to make five k, but you had to wait wait overnight and do nothing else with your coins because you didn't have any coins in the meantime. That's just uh, not too worth it in my opinion. So. If you're going to be investing in stuff and flipping like this, make sure you're being conscious with your budget and use good coin management early on in the FIFA stages. But this should help you guys out in terms of what to do with the first 10 hours of EA Access. I know it was a lot of information in this video. If you need to go back, rewind it, and listen to what I said again, I would highly recommend that because it was just like boom, boom, boom. Stuff coming right at you um, in terms of reading the flipping graphs and looking at cards and talking about the market movements and stuff like that. And if you want me to do another video on this EA Access flipping and trading stuff, let me know. I can go a little bit more in depth on some of these things. Um, but my next video in terms of timing and um, you know the events that happen on the game, because we have the web app, I made a video about that. Um, I'll link that below. We have this EA Access video, and then I'm gonna make a video about early access too. When everybody that pre-orders the game gets on the game, there's a lot of crazy market movements because of that. A lot of supply enters the market at that time period, but still a lot of stuff goes crazy high because people get coins again because some people don't want to spend the $5 on EA access or they don't even know about it. So they know that they pre-ordered the game and they got it early. Then they start playing. It's a whole new batch of people entering the game and it's just so freaking fun. I'm so excited for the start of FIFA Ultimate Team right now. After putting a few of these videos out, seeing some of the content that the guys that were at the capture event has been putting out as well, um, the pictures and stuff at least before they've released their content. As of right now, they haven't released it, but I'm very excited for a lot of that stuff. Um, but again, best way to use your 10 hours on EA Access, play games, spam games, get rewards, get packs. You can trade on the web app or the companion app and not use your 10 hours. And then of course, some of those trading methods including flipping, the daily fluctuations of cards that are popular, that are meta, that people want in their starter teams for FIFA 20. If you enjoyed the video, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.